Peace and love. Peace and loves. It's your boy, Johnny Hair God. And I just wanted to jump on here to share something with y'all because it's been very successful for me. <laughs> um, so just a little backstory. Um, I was raised in the church Christian. I grew up, got away from the church, but still had this this yearn and this 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 emptiness that I was seeking to fulfill. And so that has been fulfilled through um spirituality, uh discovering true spirit work and then doing the spirit work to ultimately cultivate myself into the the highest, greatest form or externalized expression of the God force that I could possibly be. So that's the backstory. Just real quick, um, I don't I don't believe in religion. Uh, all religions are equal. <laughs> no, all they are wrong. I believe in divine spirituality. I I believe in awareness of the God force, that infinite intelligence and presence of creation that is ever flowing in and around us as everlasting love. That's what I believe. I believe that we are all spirits and we're all um, governed by the laws, the cosmic laws of the universe that were put in place by almighty God. Okay. And so in growing up Christian and growing up in religion, uh, we studied the Bible. Well, one thing that I learned about the Bible is that the Bible is completely 100% accurate. But the thing is, we don't know how to use it. We read it in our human regnancy. The Bible is not a book of human regnancy. The Bible is a book that teaches us of our spiritual regnancy. And so they took the, these, these spiritual uh, principles and they took these spiritual, these mind states that we pass through and they personified them as characters in the Bible. And so people don't really understand the Bible because they don't know the aspect in which to read it. They don't know the intent or the true, um, the precepts, God's precepts, peace and love, baby, peace and love. Oh, it's so always a good, it's always a pleasure to see you on here. You just make my heart happy. But, um, I'm just giving a backstory as to how I became a metaphysician, a, a practitioner of mind science, um, and how I began doing spirit work, how I became a medium in the in this earthly realm as a human, and how I began to help people overcome their physical experiences through focusing on their spiritual cultivation. That's the backstory. And so I use the Bible because I understand the Bible. Again, the Bible is a book of spiritual regnancy. It teaches us of our spiritual qualities. But if you're not reading it from that standpoint, it is not going to make sense to you. It's just not. Um, it's a lot of stuff in the Bible that people misquote um, simply because they didn't get a Bible dictionary. They didn't get a concordant concordance they didn't study the etymology of these words they don't know the origins of the words they don't know they just don't have the knowledge um intellectually because they did not study the bible correctly you can read the bible a hundred years if you read it from your human if from, from from your just pure intellect you're not going to get it you have to read it from an esoteric level from a spiritual level from the level that is of the unseen that's where it's, that's what it's about. Peace and love, right, knees. Peace and love. What's up, B? Peace and love to you. So that's the, that's the backstory. That's why I use the Bible. Okay, so this is where I'm at in the Bible. John 1, 1. If you're familiar with John 1, 1, the beginning of John 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the word. And that word was God. That word was with God. At the end of that chapter, it says, and the word was made flesh. And so 
as a practitioner of uh, mind science and, after, and the study of the mind and of causation, it causes you to ask questions. And so that's what raising a consciousness is all about. The questioning of what you see, what you hear. If you're not questioning anything, then you just going with the flow. You just kind of out there taking on the collective conscious of the world. And so that collective conscious is what ultimately puts us in distress, have us um, experiencing disease and um, discord in our life. And so once you renew your mind and you separate yourself from the collective conscious of the world and start cultivating your spiritual regnancy so that you can use the God conscious, the God conscious that we all have in us, it's only then that you begin to understand the Bible. And so I asked the question, God, what word is you talking about? Because I be talking, I be talking about all the right stuff. I be saying all the right stuff, but <clears throat> my life did not start to change until I understood what the word was that was in the beginning and what word that was that was with God and was God and what word that was that became flesh. And so the word that becomes flesh is not your physical words. <clears throat> Excuse me. Your physical words come second in the process of creation. It is your mental words, your thoughts. In the beginning was your thought. And that thought was God. And that thought was with God. And that thought became flesh. It's not your physical words. It's four um it's four things that you have to do to line up in order to create a belief. That's your mental words, your thoughts, your physical words, your actions, and your feelings. Those four is what it takes to build a new belief system towards your desired outcome. And so now that I know that it's my mental words, it's my thoughts it's my thoughts that was the beginning. It's my thoughts that become flesh. You have to take control of what it is that you are thinking. And so I wake up every morning and I like to use what I call positive self-talk. I'm sure you guys heard of positive self-talk. Positive self-talk is affirmations. My happy thoughts produce a healthy body. I am made in God's image. Therefore, I am perfect because God is perfect. God, my perfection is God's perfection in me. I am whole, healthy, happy. I experience joy, peace, unlimited health, wealth, prosperity, and unlimited money in my experience right now. That's positive self-talk. But that positive self-talk comes from the beginning. In the beginning was your word, was your mental words. You have to choose the correct mental words and then line those mental words up with your physical words, your feelings, and your actions. Positive self-talk starts in the mind. I am enough. You have to tell yourself, I am enough. When you say, I am enough, that means you are saying that God in me is enough for anything that is out picture in my experience. God in me is my health. God in me is my strength. God in me is my life. God's life is my life. And so when you use PST or positive self-talk, it starts in your mind with your thoughts. Thoughts are words that run through your mind. Thought is what starts the process of creation. Peace and love, cousin. Peace and love. I see you on here. Thank you for joining. So, thought in mind is the first function in the process of creating. 
The thoughts in your mind is the first step or function in the process of creating. To create, there's a divine process. That divine process is thoughts, words, feelings, and actions. When you line up your thoughts, words, feelings, and actions toward a desired belief, that's what you are creating. That is what you will bring forth, what you will outpicture in your experience as an externalized, individualized expression of the God force. You have the power to create, and that power to create lies in your thoughts. When you align your thoughts, words, actions, and feelings toward a desired idea, you create expectancy. And this process turns ideas into flesh or experience. When you create expectancy, you know what creating expectancy is? Expectancy in the good is faith. And fear is inverted faith. Fear is the expectancy of bad. And so when you expect bad things to happen, that is what fear is. But when you expect good things, that is the cultivation of faith. And faith comes by what? Hearing. And hearing what? Hearing by the word of God. And so that word is the thoughts, the intuition that is inspired through the God force into you. That is what builds your faith. And so that faith is what ignites those thoughts, words, feelings, and actions that ultimately becomes your externalized, your, your, ex, your experience. It becomes outpictured in your experience as your daily life. So take a second and think about what you're thinking about. <laughs> Choose only thoughts that you want to experience. We have to take a second to think about what we're thinking about. You can't just allow the thoughts that pop into your head to manifest into your life. You have to take control of those thoughts. And you take control of those thoughts by renewing your mind. Well, Johnny, how do we renew our mind? I'm glad you asked. You renew your mind. By separating yourself from the things that has built the beliefs in your mind that you have right now. Well, the separation is the separation from mass media. The separation from people, places, things, toxic people in your life. The separation from things that you used to do. Video games, movies, all of the things that point to negativity, that point to Things that you don't want to experience in your life is what the separation is going to have to be from. When you separate yourself, it's only then that you can renew your mind. Be ye transformed by you renewing your mind so that you can prove that good and perfect will for God in your life. It's King Jonathan. I love you. God loves you. But self-love is the key. Self-love is the key to success. I hope this helps.